Hi, I'm Lane. Welcome back to my channel. Oh. So, for those of you who have been following my uh, journey and been watching my previous videos, if you haven't, it's fine. You can go back and watch them after you watch this one. Well, if you watch them beforehand, um, <laughs> don't get so seated, but you don't have to. Yesterday, I went to London with my best friend and cousin Gemma and I had my top surgery consultation and um, um, it still hasn't sunk in yet that it actually happened. <laughs> um, for those of you who don't know, I chose to go with Catherine Milroy in a uh, Parkside Hospital, private hospital in Wimbledon. And it took us like six hours to get there on the coach. It was a long, it was a long day. It took six hours to get to London and like six hours back. So it was like 12 hours on the coach. I don't want to do that again. I was dead on the inside as well as the outside by the time I got home at 1 a.m. this morning. But um, I went in. My appointment was at uh, 10 past three. And honestly, she was the nicest person like a, a few people say Catherine Milroy is a typical surgeon she has like no bedtime manner if she has no bedtime manner then I want to know those who have bedtime manners are like because she was lovely she was honestly she gave me the facts she sat me down she talked me through what's going on she said um she gave me quite a few information like um she asked for my details like my transition history uh, do I have family who support me when I have the surgery, would I have people who will look after me after surgery because I'm going to be like completely gone? I'm not going to be able to do heavy lifting. And I was like, yeah, I got my my auntie up the road. She's she and her cousin, my cousin Gemma, said that they'll do the shopping for me. They'll that if I need them, I know I can count on them at least. And my sister, who lives all the way in England, uh, she fully supports me, completely supports me in my transition. Uh, my dad might not understand what's going on properly. But he's he's got my back as well. So I got those two. I got my best friend Matthew. I got my best friend Amy. I I've got a load of people who support me, look after me, and are there for me. So I'm not alone in my transition, which is a good thing. Um, and she she asked me like nipple grafts and all that lot. And t I honestly didn't think I was going to go for the nipple grafts. But after thinking about it like a lot. I came to the conclusion that actually it would be, I would rather have them. And then she explained to me like, how this, because she had a look at my chest, she measured my chest, and of course she, she said, you're on um, testosterone, and I was like, yeah, I've been on it for 17 months coming up. She goes, you're on gel or you're on injections, and I said, I'm on the beta, the injections, and she goes, my chest, my lady in parts. I hate talking about them because it really makes me uncomfortable. Um, she said they're actually quite full still. So my scars are probably going to be like quite big. Like they're not going to be like small scars, they're going to be quite big. And they're going to they're gonna be, they might be a bit rounded she said because of the way the, the breast tissue and the breasts are. But she measured them and she said that um She's happy to go ahead with it. And she said that it's roughly four months into a surgery. And to be honest with you, the moment she said four months, my brain just kind of went. And then it stopped and then it went. So uh, if it is roughly four months, they get, what they'll do, they got my phone number, they got my email address, they got my address, they got everything they need from me. So they're going to phone me up with the date for the surgery. So when I get that, I will let you all know when that's happening. Um, but it's roughly four months from consultation to surgery, which puts it around about September time, which I'm okay with, because honestly, I'm I'm redoing my, my year in college because of various reasons. And one of them mainly is that I'm not comfortable enough or confident to uh, be able to do my A level exam because I'm pretty sure I'm going to mess that up because of what happened in college recently, like the three months ago. So I'm redoing the A level year, 
GCSE is fine, and that hasn't changed, it's still going ahead, I'm going to be doing that a couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, it's looking like September time, which if, that's, if that does happen in September, it's fine by me. Again, because it's at the start of the year, if I miss like a month of work, it doesn't matter, because I can easily catch up with it for the rest of the year. Which is, I'm, I'm glad for, and I'm grateful for that. For that. But, I did ask, because a, a few people have said, told me, like, I've seen a few vlogs and stuff, and they mentioned that they had to be off, off testosterone for a couple of weeks before they go in for the surgery, and I was worried that I would have to, like, stop taking my libido, or, like, miss a, miss a couple of weeks or so of my libido, and um, not be on t tea. And she literally looked at me, she goes, no, no, you can keep taking your testosterone. That's not going to change. That's not going to be hindered. Um, she does want me to come down. There'll be a pre-assessment on a Saturday before the uh, surgery. That's for COVID testing and all this lot, making sure I'm healthy. I'm not infected. I'm not got a problem or anything, so I'm fine. And then the surgery will take place on a Tuesday. Now, they want me to stay in London for a couple of days up to a week after the surgery. And then... Um, the following Tuesday after the surgery, which will be an overnight stay, I'll be coming back on the Wednesday morning sometime, and they'll take the drains out on the Wednesday before I leave. Then the tu following Tuesday, I'll have my first nipple dressing taken off, the bandages all that lot, and they'll give me a binder, a compression binder, which I'll have to wear for six weeks. And then, um, basically, I can then, like, not wear the binder. I can then, uh, I can, I, can, I can shower after the surgery, I'm just not allowed to get the dressings or anything wet. That's fine by me, that's fine by me. I want to be safe, I'm going to die. So, yeah. I really don't know what to, I, my brain is just like, it happened, but did it happen? <laughs> you know those moments when something so amazing happens? that you kind of have to stop and think, did that really happen? Did I dream it? Did I hallucinate it? But it happened. Your boy? Your boy's gonna have top surgery this year. And I'm probably gonna cry again. I haven't cried um, since finding that out, but um, I, I really don't know what to say. Um, I've wanted this surgery since I was about 18, 19, when I learned that the surgery was possible. But due to circumstances, um, bad circumstances, sadly, I wasn't unable to transition when I, I when I originally wanted to, like, when, from the start, I wasn't able to transition until almost two years ago now. But, um, yeah. One of the questions she did ask me was, um, obviously, how long was I transitioning for? And she asked me how long had my name changed, been changed for? Like, how long ago did I change my name? Which was, I believe, November 2020. Uh, yeah, November 2020 is when I changed my name. Which my best friend Amy happily signed, co-signed with. So, Amy, I owe you, I owe you. Because um, she... She literally wants to tick all the boxes to make sure that I'm not going to change my mind. I'm not going to... Um, I'm going to be able to handle the surgery. Um, one second, I will pause this and I'll come right back because I've got something I want to show you. Hey, sorry for the jump cut. <laughs> I'm back. Um, but if you do go to see Miss Victoria Rose or Miss Catherine Milroy, who are plastic surgeons, reconstructed and anaesthetic surgeons in Park Surgery Hospital. They've actually got a little um, a little document, a leaflet, which um, goes into detail about the surgery, the types of surgery, um, complications that could, like, um, what happens afterwards, um, responsibilities that you have, um, they tell you what after the surgery, what what to, what you can and can't do. 
um, they they explain the different types of uh, top surgeries you can have, which are liposuction, peri areola, or inframammary fold. Double incisions to those who don't speak surgical language. <laughs> And then just go, they just explain like um, what happens to in surgery if you have this one or that one. Um, they explain about the nipples if you want them or not. Uh, the risks after the surgery, um, infections that can happen, changes in the nipple and skin sensation, which you know they they they, they dot the T's, they dot the I's and cross the T's. Ah. Uh, Little, little funny joke for you guys. All day yesterday, I couldn't say the right thing. Like I was talking to Gem about things, and I would say the, I, I, for some unknown reason, I got it in my head that the coach was actually a plane. Like every time I talked speaking about the coach, I would mention plane, and Gemma would look at me and she'd be like, "Don't you mean train? Uh, don't you mean coach?" And I'm like, "Yeah, coach. It's exactly what I mean." And when I was on the train, I. I called the train a bus. <laughs> like they're all modes of transport, but for some reason my brain was unable to differentiate one or the other, and I I, I just don't know if it's the fact that I was so tired because I woke up at five a.m. We were on the coach by half six, going to London. We got to London by twelve twenty, and then we walked around London for a bit. We went to Wimbledon, had my consultation went back to uh, Victoria, coach Victoria, um, yeah, went back to Victoria, London, uh, had some food, walked around a bit, uh, caught the coach, and he said, train again, he said, train then, caught the coach at half seven in, at night, didn't get home until one in the morning, so I'm, I'm feeling it, you know, I'm kind of still feeling it, but, and, Gemma brought um, Bien uh, vanilla biscuits, and when she pulled them out, because it was dark outside, I just saw that this carton, this little pack, and for some unknown reason, I just thought it was milk, and so I looked at her and I was like, why do you have a carton of milk on you? Cue hysterical laughter from the both of us. <laughs> and to this day, I'm just like, why did I think that was milk? But yeah. This leaflet goes into information. She'll, if you see her or Catherine, or if, she, if you have Catherine or Victoria Rose, they will hand you this uh, leaflet. And as you can see, she wrote it on the bottom Saturday pre assessment, Tuesday up, Wednesday dressings. And if you have any questions, they're more than ha she's more than happy to answer them. Uh, so everything went smoothly. I was it was about fifteen minutes I was in there for. Um, the worst part for me was uh, having my uh, <clears throat> my having to take off my binder and showing my uh, upper body. Which, uh, but she like asked she asked for your height and how much you weigh. That's just to like work out BMI things like that. If you're overweight, underweight, I am perfectly fine. She said my weight my weight is perfectly fine. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not overweight, I'm not underweight, I'm, I'm good. So weight-wise, no issue for surgery. Height-wise, that's just to work out your being right, basically. <laughs> but yeah, I, I made her laugh though, because I said I'm between five foot and five foot four. And then she looked at me and she was like, smarter than I went, no, I'm, I, sorry, I mean five foot and five foot one. Why did I say five foot four? I'm just really tired. <laughs> but that's me. I, when I get stressed, if I'm anxious, I crack a joke and I'm trying to make people laugh. Because if they're laughing, then I can relax a little bit and be like, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. So, yeah. Your boy is having top surgery this year, providing all goes according to plan. Yes. The most important thing I need to work out is where I'm going to stay when I'm in London. Because I've got to go down there on Friday before the Saturday for the pre-assessment and then I gotta stay until the a week and week and a, just a week and a half in London. So I'm gonna have to I'm gonna save up as much as I can. Uh find a place that I can 
go and stay in. I'm probably going to see if I can go to a Premier Inn or somewhere like that. Or I'm just going to ask a friend. I'm, I think I, I'm, I think I'm just going to ask around and see what I can find. See if I can find places to stay. Um, but yeah. So, I did say I was going to vlog uh, yesterday, but, you know, 5 a.m. wake up. 1 a.m. return. Your boy was so tired, he was barely functioning. <laughs> I'm surprised I managed to get in my front door. Because I was I was so tired, I didn't think I would be able to open my front door. And unlock it and open it. But I, I did it, I got in, I'm fine. So, yeah. So. That's what happened yesterday. Everyone, um, thank you for watching, if you watched it. Um, Stay safe, stay hydrated, eat, look after yourselves, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.